Welcome to the Kick-Ass Couples Podcast. This is the place where we help committed couples who want to level up their marriage, experience newfound clarity, hope, and confidence. We're Matthew and Kim, co-hosts and husband and wife. In 26 years together, we've seen a lot and never thought it could be as good as it is right now. We're here to help you successfully navigate the messy, dirty, and wonderful world of marriage. We believe all couples deserve and are capable of experiencing an extraordinary and fulfilling marriage. And each week we're bringing you life lessons from real life successful couples to help you grow and strengthen your relationship. And now let's dive into today's episode. We're really known for being touchy. Sitting close on the couch. <laughs> Our kids probably think we're crazy. Um, probably most of, I'm going to say probably 90, the, all of the conflict in our relationship probably been from me. Um, I think in our marriage, we find great appreciation for each other. You have to have love. That's what works is you have to be in it together forever. The greatest predictors of divorce or a relationship falling apart is when spouses cannot accept influence from each other. Not willing to, right? The best, most fulfilling year of your marriage. We invite you to pre-order Matthew's new book, Kick-Ass Husband, Winning at Life, Marriage, and Sex. You can get it at MatthewPHoffman.com. Again, that's MatthewPHoffman.com. And now back to the show. So I'm super excited to be able to welcome my very special. So I'm super excited to be able to welcome my very special and dear friends, Trish and Vinny Biondoletti. These are my childhood friends. So I'm really excited about today's episode. Um, Vinny is the very best fishing uh, <laughs> charter captain out of the Florida Keys. And so um, affectionately known as Captain Vinny um, for our family. So, um, and uh, Trish, grown up with Cr Trish since grade school. And um, Trish is, has the biggest heart of anyone I know. And she <laughs> works at the high school and she's been in administration and even teaching some vocational courses there as well. So welcome to both of you. Super excited to have you here on our podcast today. We're grateful to have and, you. And you yeah. guys, you guys, you guys know why you're, you were asked to be on the podcast, right? No, it, 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 no, no, <laughs> I, I, no idea. 37 <laughs> years, 37 years of marriage, years right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And July you guys, 1st. July 1st, 37 years. And you three guys, boys, three boys, right? Two grandchildren. Two grandchildren. One, one on another, the way. Yeah. Another one on the way. Yeah. And maybe a third uh, a third marriage in the making we hear, maybe. I hope so. <laughs> hope so. Hope. Fingers are crossed. I hope so. And, and I mean, and what I know about your relationship is that you're still in love. You guys have a wonderful time together. And I see the smile and the joy <laughs> and the magic between the two of you every time we're together. And it makes my heart smile because- Thank you. We, we love to be with you, not only because you're fantastic people, but you guys have a killer, kick-ass relationship. And so that's going to lead us right into our first question, which Kim is going to ask you. So what makes you a kick-ass couple? And either of you can take that question, whoever's most comfortable with it. But I really do want to hear from both of you, because yeah. what oh, one yeah. may say, the other may um, have a, a little bit of a different, uh, a different reply. So... What makes you guys a kick-ass couple other than 37 years of marriage? <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. You want to do it or not? you want me to? I'm happy to. Okay, it. go ahead. Um, I think in our marriage, we find great appreciation for each other. And I learned from a young age that Vinny was always secure for me and that he always supported everything that I needed or wanted. And I think that having appreciation for each other leads to a stronger commitment to each other in wanting to do good things and share in those things. Awesome. Yes. How about you, Vinny? Do you have any, anything to add to that? Well, I would say <laughs> that, uh, you know, from a very young age, obviously, we've been together. So... 
she's had my heart since then. So <laughs> anything that makes me feel comfortable with her. That's sweet. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, we just find joy in each other and try yeah. to make things work together. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. sometimes it's just the day to day things, right? That add up to the, it's not all the big things. It's just all the little things that make you feel appreciated and secure. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, it's been 37 years, I know. And, you know, we're going to, to go forward, sometimes you have to go back. And so what we want to talk about next is you guys each to think about what did love look like when you were growing up? You know, Kim often says, she says, you know, grandpa is in our bones, right? Mm -hmm. And the way you experience love in your families growing mm -hmm. up is kind of what you bring to a marriage, to your relationship, because you have ideas of what love should be or maybe of what it shouldn't be. And those experiences that you got in each of your family. So maybe, um, Trish, if you would start off by telling us when you were growing up, what did love look like in your family? How did you see your parents uh, demonstrating that to each other and to you? Well, Vinny and I grew up in very different style households, which I think we bring the best of both of those things. Uh, mine was a little more difficult. I lost my dad at the age of eight. And I moved to the Florida Keys, and I couldn't imagine why they were taking me so far from my home in the Queens, New York, <laughs> to the Florida Keys. And so my mom had met somebody and moved down here with a stepfather who was not easy to live with. And he was uh, very hard on me, um, abusive in many ways. And I feel that through what I had to endure made me the person I am in the way that I protect my children. And I've never talked down to my kids because that's all I ever knew was being battered down. Even though I was a good kid, it was never good enough. And through all of that and all of high school, Vinny never left my side mm -hmm. and he knew my struggles. And I thought, why does he stay with me? There was never an easy day. And there was, he's such a great person but he never left my side and it's difficult and it's challenging. I always had him and that's my security. Sure. I know my mom loved me, but I feel like sometimes people blind themselves. And so love in my house was, it wasn't really there. It was more of a hostile environment and uh, it's hard to talk about, but I feel like I'm lucky because without those things, I wouldn't be the person I am. And I was always able to move forward from that. And sometimes being young and finding somebody, God didn't give me my first baby by accident. <laughs> I had already, I grew up with four brothers, the middle child. All I knew was taking care of my younger brothers and I knew I would be a good mom. So when that, came upon us in our relationship it was a gift from god and we're thankful every day for that so that's my childhood Absolutely. but i got to live in his because we were so young so he can share his families <laughs> go ahead so what did that look like for you Vinny? for me um you know i had awesome parents awesome childhood you know my my parents were married for 52 years before my dad passed away. Wow. Um, you know, we grew up with, you know, family dinners. Yeah. Sundays were family day. You know, probably everything a lot of people would love to have. Yeah. And, you know, just knew that my parents loved each other. And I learned a lot from that. So. Sure. Do you remember yeah. anything specific, Vinny, that you saw between your parents? Like, how did they express love to each other? How did they express it to each other? How do you remember that? You know what? They were, you, you know, sometimes you can just, you watch people and just the way they looked at each other, mm -hmm. you know, the way they smiled when they passed each other, you know, it's just, they were always having a good time and always making sure that, yeah. that, uh, Everybody around them was having a nice time. They were uh, real role models. 
for sure. I'd like to add to that. Is, sure. So I was blessed enough to be at a lot of those Sunday dinners and his family accepted me as their family. Um, and the one thing I loved is, you know, they always called each other hun. 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 And they would always, no matter what, hun, we're in this together. We got this. And it was like, that's what works is you have to be in it together forever and you have to set those role models. So I was blessed enough to be a part of the Beyond the Letty family, yeah. which made up for anything that I had to endure. Sure. So first of all, I want to say that you're not just a good mother. You're a great mother. <laughs> <laughs> you're a I great agree. mother. And you, you took so much of that history and you made good out of it. You created what you wanted to have in a relationship mm -hmm. with someone. And, you know, it, it's those things that, that we endure sometimes and that change us and make us grow into being better people. And um, I, I, I think you can either go in a positive direction or you can go in a negative direction with right. it. And you chose to rise up and to yeah. be seen and to um, live a different life for, with yeah. you and your children. Yeah, I knew and I would so, never have that lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. thank you for yeah. being open and sure. vulnerable. I know there are a lot of people out there, Trish, that can relate to exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And so I'm grateful for your, your vulnerability. And it shows the strength of your character, Trish, that you were able to take something that you didn't like and didn't want and use it for good, right? That's, yeah. that's, that's what Every life- Every single day of my life. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You say that all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, we appreciate you sharing that. And it lets people know that it doesn't matter. You, right. you know, Vinny had a great circumstance that he loved and he brings that love and that example and that warmth to you and to your children, your family, and obviously all your friends. Right. And you had something that wasn't the same, but you still used it for good. And look what you've been mm -hmm. able to do in 37 years for each other and for your family. So ah, yeah. our hats off Thanks. to both of you for, for that's hard to take those two realities and mix them together right. and, yeah. and make something great, right? Bake that great cake with ingredients that you might not think <laughs> sure. go, go right. together, yeah. right? Well, because yeah. I think there are things that you have to work through, right? right? When you bring those two different things to a relationship, you have to learn how to work mm -hmm. with each other. Sure. So we're going to shift gears a little bit and we're going to go into the, the what we call the three C's. And I don't know if you all remember, we sent you something that has the 13 pillars yes. of what we talk about. And the three C's that we like to focus on in all of our podcasts are commitment, communication and conflict resolution. And so, um, Trish, I I'd love to hear from you. And then, Vinny, you can chime in after again. Trish, tell me what <laughs> commitment looks like in your relationship. You guys spoke about it a little bit when you said he's there for me, he's got me no matter what, but talk to me about how commitment has shown up the last 37 years for you guys. Well, it's really been 41 because we've been together. <laughs> oh, I know. I was 13, he was 14, yeah. Yeah, it sounds young. Yeah. But even all through our high school years, we were always committed to each other. I think we enjoy being around each other and we bring out the best in each other. And um, like I said, Vinny's very secure for me. And we just always have felt a very strong connection. And I think that's always led to a very strong commitment of love. Right, I, I agree. We, you know, obviously when you're, when, you're, when you're little, you have, you know, little boyfriends or girlfriend crushes, you know, but when you find, <laughs> the person and you look at them that you know I don't care if you're 13 or 14 or 37 doesn't matter when you find that person that takes your heart you're committed and I think we found it early and for me uh, you know that's where I knew I was committed for a long time Forever. Forever. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah, there's yeah. no outs. But no. It, there's no outs. No, 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 have no, a, no. You guys don't have a plan B. No, we've never considered an out yet. No. We've always been happy. No, so. we're good. Wow. Yeah, thank goodness. We're good. But that's never been a thought, consideration, or conversation. Yeah. 
yeah. it's not an option. We, you, you work hard and you come yeah. far and raise children and you want to be the best. It's example. not easy. Life's not easy. You know, it's every, there's challenges every day mm -hmm. and you yeah. know, we just seem to work through. Yeah. We've worked through, yeah. we commit to our everyday time and, you know, relationship. So mm -hmm. sure. we're good with that. Yeah. So I'm curious, um, how do you communicate with each other when you are, I know that, you know, you went through having children. Now you have grandchildren. Um, and that's a lot of peaks and valleys over a lot of years. So how did you all communicate and, um, really work with each other? You? Me? Yeah. Go ahead, Benny. <laughs> Well, I mean, what know, stands out to you and in, in your communication style and how you really interact with each other? Honestly, probably <laughs> my communication skills are, are not that great, but, but uh, you know, we just work with each other. You know, if something's on your mind, you just, you know, just say it, you know, it's we're secure enough in each other's, mm -hmm. you know, in our relationship, obviously, that you can't you can't say anything that, you know, we can't endure, you know, we're going to get through whatever. So, you know, we just talk about things like, uh, where we've been, what we've, what we've trying to accomplish and where we want to go. And we're, we're good with that. We are communication to me. I found through all the years, especially raising the boys was, we both always wanted to be with our kids, like together first, but every moment with our kids. So he would rush home from fishing to sit with me in the pickup line with the kids. And I thought, oh no, gosh. I can go. But no, every day he could be there to pick them up at the pickup line, which, you know, could be a long time waiting. <laughs> yeah, it gave dinner. us time to talk. <laughs> like, that's where you talk. You don't, yeah. you know. You're cautious of what you ever talk about in front of your kids, just to be a good role model. But you always had that time in the car, time in the boat, walks around the neighborhood. Like, I think that's our strongest communication as far as like really being able to to touch on anything that we want to speak about privately. So, and dinners, we are big on family dinner every night, communication at the table. Um, I think that's what teaches our kids, yeah. and to talk about how their days were, how our days were. And so I think that led to good communication. I was like, you had some good opportunities, good family time. You talk about, you know, what I hear you saying is you guys made it work. If it was the pickup line at carpool for your kids <laughs> right. or a walk around the neighborhood at night right. yeah. or, or on the boat because you wanted to be. And right. I know sometimes it had to be. And I know, Trish, you were maybe even working whether mm -hmm. you're pulling a trap up, right? Lobster or a, or yes. a crab trap up, mm -hmm. you know, so doing, doing what you had to do, but making sure you had those times to connect. Right. To so build sounds that like, time in. Sure. So you, you made sure you, you were committed to building it in. Was right. there, so it was easy for you to find those. Did you ever have a time where you felt that you weren't able to have good communication or there was things that got in the way, like anything that tripped you guys up that you had to figure out? Well, you know, Vinny built a great business and in order to build a business, you can't turn away a fishing trip. So whether it's a morning, an afternoon or a night or all three in one day, that's what he had to do. You know, you're building a business. So there were many, many, many nights and days that the kids didn't see Vinny. So there was not a lot of communication. And during the busy season, that could be, he could fish 60 days in a row. So I would take the kids down to the dock. We'd visit for 30 minutes just so they could remember what he looked like. <laughs> he was upset because they would be asleep when he went oh. to work and asleep when they came home from work. So those were challenging times. But yeah. like I said, I load them up. We would go down before a ball game, visit with him and, you know, get in all the hugs and love. And um, but we worked through it like I understood what he was trying to do. And in order to you know build a household and travel and do things you have to work so i appreciate his hard work and dedication and never it never <laughs> angered me but it was more work to get down there to see him and to communicate yeah. for the kids too 
Sure. And that had to be hard for you, Vinny, to just have very limited time with the boys and with Trish. Tell me a little bit about how that affected you. Well, you know, obviously you want to do the right thing Mm -hmm. and uh, showing the kids that, you know, hard work, you know, pays off and having a mother that is there for them all the time Mm -hmm. and her bringing them to the dock or me rushing home to get to the lot into the pickup line so that we can sit in the car together and talk, but them getting in the car, you know, just making that extra effort, you know, that's, they see, they see that and they, they learn from that. And I think, you know, our boys are all grown now and have families of their own. So, you know, they've learned, I think they've learned yeah. from what we example, the we example we've created and, you know, sure. yeah. When it comes to creating a kick-ass marriage, do you ever wonder how you're doing? We found that there are 13 key components that make up a thriving relationship, which is why we've created the kick-ass assessment. In this powerful free tool, you'll learn what they are and how you and your spouse are ranking in each one. And you'll get recommendations that will help you start improving today. To get your results, simply visit MatthewEHoffman.com. Again, that's MatthewEHoffman.com. It's time to start kicking ass. Let's go. After communication, our last C is conflict resolution. And we know that when we have um, 37 years of marriage that, again, peaks and valleys. (laughs) And sometimes those valleys can run pretty deep. And there's going to be conflict, (laughs) right? There's going to be conflict. How do you resolve conflict when something gets, and, and maybe there's t- a time that something got super heated. How do you, how do you approach that? And what do you do to, to resolve conflict when it arises? Well, I have to, I have to truly be honest about this. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't, and it, it's, I don't know if it's, I don't want to say it's embarrassing, but it's not, it's not for me. I don't think we've really ever raised our voice at each other. So, we don't fly off the handle. We don't scream and yell. We, you know, we're pretty calm people. So yeah, we are probably most of, I'm going to say probably 90, all of the conflict in our relationship probably been from me. Yeah. <laughs> right. When you agree with that, just say yes. And then, um, <laughs> okay. you know, we work things out. I, I probably get quiet. She gets quiet and we probably sit on it for a day or two. Yeah. We come together, you know, before we really speak about it. Yeah. I think so. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. I think that he's truthfully right. And it is hard to say that we haven't really had terrible times and we do not raise our voices to each other. Um, If anything ever happens, it's probably the female who's more sensitive to how something was said and how maybe I received it. And so I would tend, I tend to clam up and that's something I'm working on. And well, I've always been working on is to kind of address it when something bothers me because he doesn't always know that what he said or how he said it maybe hurt my feelings. Right. But um, we tend to, like he said, give it a little bit of time. We usually visit these things when we go to bed and we have quiet time, no interruption and can say, look, I just want to let you know that like maybe you didn't realize this, but it hurt my feelings. And, um, And they're probably pretty silly things because, you know, women, we're, you know, emotional sometimes. And like I said, I had four brothers, three sons, and a husband. Without my girlfriends, <laughs> That's honest a lot God. of men in your life. It's a lot of men in my life. It so is. for some reason, you know, they have their own way. But sometimes I think maybe they forget that maybe You're mom's a, a, I'm a girl. Yeah. And maybe yeah. I'm a little sensitive towards how something was said or, and I might just take it a little harder. But I think 
in our bedtime is uh, when we spend time resolving and talking about it. And uh, it's not always easy because sometimes I tend to press things down. And I don't know if that's from my childhood where right. I didn't speak of things. Um, so it's a work in progress. But we sure. we resolve it by talking it out. And um, it's worked for us. So I want to ask you, so you guys both said that we're both pretty calm and quiet and there's not been, you know, these knockdown, drag out, screaming, vases crashing. We're boring. The wall. <laughs> boring. And that's, and that's okay. We're not yeah. looking for the juicy, sordid story. But I, my, my, so I'm a little curious. Is that because you feel that's just how the two of you are as individuals? Or do you feel that you guys either talked it out or worked it out as to this is how you're going to approach things? So. Where does that nature come from? Is it individual or was it an agreement or collective? How'd you guys you, get there? You know, you know, obviously my, my parents were, you know, I had two parents in my household my whole entire life. They were fantastic. If they had an argument, I never knew about it. And yeah. knowing that her household was a little more, you know, if you said something, you might've got yelled at, mm -hmm. you know? So knowing that and knowing how she felt about that and wanting to change that, I'm not going to be screaming and yelling and, you know, well, yeah. making conflict sure. because she doesn't want that. And I don't want that. I didn't grow up like that. So right. you're not going to, you know, I felt like we're not going to, we're not going to have this and do it because mm -hmm. it's not, I don't feel like it's our makeup. We're not angry people. No. We're happy people. And I think we just bring the best of that. Not to say you don't have an off day, a sad day. You know, like I said, I'm a girl. I'm emotional. And it seems like he knows. We like that. Um, yeah. He knows when to let me have my emotional times. You know, I lost my mom, like many people. And it's it's been difficult for me every day. And some days you can find me in my bedroom floor crying. And he knows when to touch, when to give me space. And I think we feed off of that from each other. And I appreciate that because sometimes you really just need alone time. So I don't know if it's just that we are so considerate. I don't know. We really never had any great challenges. Well, I, feel like, <laughs> I feel like I hear you saying, Vinny, that you, you understand Trish and you know what those triggers are. Oh, yeah. And you know that any raising of your voice or um, talking down to her is really going to trigger some ugly stuff for her. And yeah, so yeah. why, go, why go there? Um, right. Why go there? It's I, I not who I am. That you're aware. Yeah. Right. It's not who I am. And, and it, you know, she doesn't need that. She grew up with that. Her brothers grew up with that. So, yeah. you know, why... That's not even Well, an we option. don't want that pattern in our oh. life. No. And we no. knew from early on. I mean, we did talk early on, even yeah. though we were young. We knew where we came from. I probably taught Vinny about um, resolving things with our family, with our kids, and talking things out because I would never live in a household like I had. So I think that from from my background and his we were able to come up with what our plan would be for our kids, which would right. be protecting them and keeping them close by us sure. and never letting them be harmed. Sure. Well, I think, and Vinny, I mean, Kim nailed it on the head is, you know, why step on a landmine if you know it's a landmine, right? <laughs> right? I mean, that's, 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 as insanity, right? Oh, I'm going to get hurt, but I'm going to do it anyway, or it's no, going to no, no, hurt. No. Yeah, I don't want to hurt so, her feelings. Well, but, and that's yeah. a, and that's a beautiful, that's like, that's commitment, right? Yeah. And that's also great communication because you're saying, I know what she needs. I know what she doesn't need. And I, that's you saying, I'm going to work to give it to her because I love her yeah. and I'm committed. And that's, oh, that's, yeah. that's beautiful. And, and I think that's, that's, uh, th that's great. And it's a great <laughs> example. That's what, that's what kick-ass couples do is they, they, they take those things and apply them. And it's a beautiful example of supplying that need because it's not, it's not give, it's not about you giving her what you want to give her. It's about no. you knowing what she needs and giving her what she needs. And that's a Agreed. great seesaw swinging yeah. back and forth in your relationship. And so I want to just label it because I want to make sure you guys know 
that it's apparent to others looking in. And as you talk about the dynamics of the relationship, that's what we see being played out. And that's a beautiful thing. And that's what successful couples do. Yeah. And that's a yeah. great example of it. And you guys got Thank that. You. you got that early on. I mean, you can ask Matthew. I'm just getting good at communicating in my later years. I can go no, from zero no, no, to no. 60 really fast. Yeah. <laughs> so, we're, we're, we're all works. You're way ahead of we're, us. We're all works in progress. Absolutely. Sure. You got to work every day. Yeah. yeah. Work together. Yeah. No doubt. Well, so those are three of our 13 pillars and we believe that those are the most important they're really foundational in a successful relationship um we have 10 more and i think you have the list of the 13 pillars do you have the do you have the list i can run through them so okay. i'm gonna yeah okay. i'm gonna run through them for yeah. you guys so as, yeah. as i say these things i uh yeah. if you guys will each think about so we talked about three important ones and those are all important and we, we think there are others are too. As I say these out, I want you guys to pick one that you think okay. is important or important to you and then you can talk about that, okay? okay? The fourth pillar is trust and honesty. The fifth is patience. The sixth is intimacy. The seventh is lasting love. The eighth is selflessness. Then we have unity, then servant leadership, then faith or moral code, then appreciation and security. So, and I can read those again or go back to them. So Trish, as you hear me read those things out, which one of those really pops out at you or do you feel is important to you or your relationship or, or for a relationship to work well? Well, what jumps out to me is intimacy because I feel like that's the greatest connection that we can share. And we're really known for being touchy, sitting close <laughs> on the couch. <laughs> Our kids probably think we're crazy. Um, I feel like being intimate and touching um, all night long, there's a foot on him or a foot on me. It just feels good. It feels right. I like to be, touched and loved. And, um, I think it's really important. I think it's the foundation. I mean, everything is important in a relationship, but I think you should want to connect and touch and be close. And that makes me feel good. We've seemed to always have that too. And we like it. <laughs> How about yeah. you, Vinny? Do, does one of those. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to have you? to, I'm going to have to be honest. Could you, could you repeat? Yeah, of course. Because <laughs> there was one there that, yeah. that, I, that I thought about and then. I got oh, distracted yeah, you. Yeah, I Squirrel. Distracted. Yes, I was distracted. Squirrel. All right. I'm going to read ahead. through them again. Go. Trust and Come honesty. On, <laughs> patience. Intimacy. Lasting love. Selflessness. Unity. Servant leadership. Faith and moral code. Appreciation. And security. Okay. So when you, as soon as you, as soon as you said selflessness, what came to my mind was my wife, she's, she's selfless. She thinks of everybody before herself. You know, she puts, you know, she's, she's, you know, always thinking of others first, you know, she's selfless. She's, she puts everybody first. That's the only way I can describe it um family me what we're doing um what impact has it had on your relationship Vinny? her selflessness uh, you know what i i learned from that it's like you look at her and you go oh my gosh how how are you doing that you know how can you how can you just keep going and giving it to me it's you know she bounces around from one project to the next constantly doing things for people and i just look at her and i'm like Wow, how are you doing that? But you're always helping me. Well, I he try to help. help me. I try I, to help. No, but but you're the you're the power behind it. So it's you know well, we we go from one thing to I the next. I probably come up with ideas, but he's yeah, so supportive. I, I do a lot of community service and right. service at my school for students that the, are very important to me because there's so many people that are underprivileged or need help. 
And so I do put them first. You're selfless. And, but you help me. You load the car. He does. I mean, <laughs> that's not the point. <laughs> all through COVID, we dropped gift cards and mailboxes. And he drove me from 106 to mile wow. marker 70. And I'm like, you wow. don't know. Really, no, I'm going. And so yeah, we share in it together. I get it. Do, it's my idea. Really? Like, yeah. But, <laughs> but you help team. execute. You help execute. Yeah, 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 but and you're there to support it, which is nice. Yeah, and well, what I hear coming out too is servant leadership. So she's mm -hmm. selfless yeah. and trying to be, provide service, and then Vinny, you're there right along with her. Doesn't matter whose idea it is, right. but you, no. you're doing it together, which leads to another pillar, which is unity. So it's mm -hmm. crazy they're all how, it all comes how, how they're all how yeah. they all come together. But I love the fact that you. It sounds like also, Vinny, that you're saying she motivates you to be more selfless because you're like, how oh, does, absolutely. How does, she's, absolutely. A great, she's a great example for you. And and here here's another thing that's going on there that you guys, it's not one of our pillars, but it does kind of fall in there and it's accepting influence, right? Well, if couples, so there's a guy named John, Dr. John Gottman, and one of their predictors of the greatest predictors of divorce or a relationship falling apart is when spouses cannot accept influence from each other, not willing to, right? Mm -hmm. And you, what you just talked about and uh, through your, your uh, talking about selflessness and servant leadership is you guys are willing to accept influence from each other. That means mm -hmm. one, somebody takes the lead and you're fine with that and the other one takes a lead, you're fine with that too. Absolutely. And, 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 and that's, that's really critical. And, and, I, and I see you demonstrate that. That's another great kudos and f fun to see you guys demonstrate that. <laughs> so we we believe that when you have an incredible marriage like the two of you do when you're masters at or kick ass i should say at being a couple um you can't help but have that spill over into other things that you do into the into other things that are happening in your life we call that sort of spillover thinking how has the success of your relationship Build over into other things in your life. Can you give me some examples? I guess I go back to commitment and I think it spills over to friendship and commitment with my friends that are so important in my life. And even when you don't talk to them frequently, <laughs> when you do, you feel like you never left off. And um, I think being a committed friend and um, sharing yourself with people, which, cause I learned from my friends, um, I think is a way that maybe we spill over to um, keeping connections when it's not always easy, you know, yeah. and distance is hard, but we make that a priority. So yeah. I think that's important. You're right. I, you know, for me, you know, I'm pretty much, uh, you know, I, go to work, do my thing. She supports me hundred percent, keeps everything running. Yeah. And I just, which it's totally appreciated. And so when I come home, I want to make sure that I can jump in and give a handout wherever it's needed. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a team teamwork. You know, she's supporting me when I'm not here, she's keeping everything going. So, when I come home, I got to be committed to, you know, jumping in and, and, you know, taking out the trash or cooking because right, she's right. had a busy day. So, you know, we work it out like that. We're, we're a good team. Yeah. I think it spills over to your relationships with your customers too. Cause you uh, share with your, yeah. he shares with his customers a lot. They're always interested yeah. in our family and how things are doing and how are the boys and they've grown up with right. our kids coming to the dock. So I think for Vinny, he spends a lot of time communicating with people and they're very interested in our family. And most, you know, a lot of the people he fished with don't come back with the same wife. And <laughs> it's hard over yeah. the years to yeah. see people separate and, you yeah. know, have difficulties in their marriage, but they're still very interested in ours, which is nice because he's always happy to share about. Yeah. And his customers will call and say, oh my gosh, all he does is talk about you. I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> but they said, you know what? 
he's happy. And I go, well, that great. makes me happy. That's right. Yeah. That's well, nice. Yeah. That goodness spills over from your relationship to his business. And I'm sure yeah. is a big reason why he's so successful. Yeah, he's happy. Confident, fulfilled, stable, right? All, all that yeah. good stuff. That's, that's yeah, great. Absolutely. That's I great. think people want to be around secure, happy people. So I think that he's done a good job sure. with his business. Thanks. All right, one more question here, guys. Coming All right. back, Vinny, if you had to go back to your pre-married self, I know you guys were dating at 13, 14. Okay. But I'm telling you, okay, you're going be before, like 10 you, years before old. you got married, you're going to well, put your hands on the shoulders of yourself and you're going to yes. say, this one thing is what you got to know or you got to do. What advice would you give to your pre-married self before embarking on the journey that you've come on? I've, I'm... I, I feel incredibly fortunate for obviously our relationship and, and the things that we've have, have, and, but, um, this, this last couple, this last week, I heard a couple different people say this, you have to have love. And if you have love, I think everything else just kind of falls in place. So if I had to go, back to that you know pre-married self i would say make sure that you have love because it's you know it really is the most important thing if you love somebody wholeheartedly everything else will work itself out so you know i didn't know that when i was young girl but now it's the foundation. it's love you know you have to you have to All have love. love and right. and you having love with your wife, your kids see that, everybody sees that, and it just makes everything better. So that's what I would give a, a young me, tell me, make sure you have love. Beautiful. So, Thank you. All right, Trish. Yeah. What would you tell that pre-married Trish? Yeah, Ron. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Um, I would probably tell myself to um, be stronger in communication. I think that holding it in for me um, makes things it makes it difficult for me instead of just sharing and even though we all need some time to figure things out, I feel like maybe if I didn't hold on to things, um, and I think from an earlier age, cause I think communication is where a lot of marriages struggle, you know? And I think ha if I would have been able to tell myself something, I think I would say, don't be afraid to share your feelings and to communicate them. And I think that's what I would tell myself. Beautiful, right? Well, we are so grateful to have had the two of you today to share a little bit of your history. We'd love to know, Captain Vinny, we know that Trish yes, doesn't want you fishing 365 <laughs> days a year. No. But if people want to find you and learn more and experience the magic of backcountry fishing with Captain Vinny, how would they do that? How would they do that? Find how do they find on How do they find Facebook. Facebook, Facebook, Vinny Biondoletti, or Vinny Biondoletti. Instagram, okay. Captain Underscore. underscore Vinny Biondoletti. That's where you <laughs> right. find me. Nice. You know, I'm not technologically advanced, so <laughs> that's the best I can tell you. <laughs> that's great. That's great. Google. Google, Google. me. There Googling. you go. All right. Biondoletti. Yeah, you, can, you can Google it. And, and I'm going to spell that because it took me a few years to get it. <laughs> B-I-O-N-D-O-L-E-T-T-I, Biondoletti. And yeah. I think there's only one probably Captain Biondoletti in the Florida Keys. Am there I right about be. that? Mm -hmm. Only one. There's only one Vinny there's Biondoletti. Only one that's very Vinny. darn sure. So that's how <laughs> we find you. And Trish, you're you're still you're working at the high school, still giving and volunteering and helping yeah. kids mm -hmm. in high school. Yeah, I love it there. I love the kids. They're amazing. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. We hear about them all the time. Yeah. Yeah. He warned me early on that I couldn't bring them home. <laughs> so that, you that was an agreement. I know. Early on. Early on. He said, I know it's going to pull at your heart, but we, you can't bring them home. So <laughs> I've abided by that, but I help a lot of kids at school and I love that. That's wonderful. Well, again. well thank you both so, oh, thank so you. much from the bottom of our hearts <laughs> oh. we are so excited we can't wait till we get the opportunity to, to interview this. you 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love right. it. Is the is the when's the podcast starting, guys? Let us know. We'll be first. <laughs> yeah. I promise. No, congratulations. Uh, we no, love this it. is awesome what you're doing and helping other people and sharing stories and building strength and relationship is is what it's about. So that's really a great thing you're doing. So glad to have you guys today. Yeah, Thanks thank again. Thank you very much. Take thank care, guys. You. Is the when's the podcast starting, guys? Let us know. <laughs> we'll be first. <laughs> yeah. I promise. No, congratulations. Uh, we no, love this it. is awesome what you're doing and helping other people and sharing stories and building strength and relationship is is what it's about. So that's really a great thing you're doing. So glad to have you guys today. Yeah, Thanks again. Thank you very much. Take thank care, guys. You. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. That's all we've got for this episode of the Kick-Ass Couples Podcast. If you like the content of this show, you'll love Matthew's upcoming book, Kick-Ass Husband, Winning at Life, Marriage, and Sex. To receive a digital mini book of quotes and images from the book, all you have to do is rate this show and leave a review in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you tune in to listen.